All right, you freaks. Just hold it. If you really want to tangle with someone, why not try your luck against the Wolverine? Hugh Jackman has one last outing as the feral rage machine Wolverine coming in 2017. It's hard to imagine anyone else playing the character. Save for being too tall, he was perfect for the role. Part of who he is. You know, if Hugh could shrink himself down a foot, he would. It's a shame he never got to go all out with an R-rated solo Wolverine movie. Now that would have had fans in a frenzy. The gore has always been a big part of the character, and it's sad to see him always getting nerfed to a PG-13 badass in the films. It's like having someone's only superpower be cutting people's heads off, and you make him the star of a kid's show. What good is he then? And X-Men Origins Wolverine is probably the lowest point for Jackman's career as the character so far. That movie has gone down in history as one of the worst superhero films for so many reasons. But, I'm here today to tell you that maybe something good came out of it. I present to you a classic example of a happy accident. The Wolverine game that satisfies every complaint we had from the movie. Except one, but I'll get to that later. Production delays led the film to take much longer than expected with weather being erratic, Hugh Jackman being busy with prior engagements, and the screenplay still being written while they were filming it. All of this had the producers requesting that the presumably shitty video game tie-in be delayed in its release as well. Therefore, the developers had months of downtime with a finished game and nothing to do but polish its claws. All of this extra time helped them churn out a great final product that surpasses the awful material it was licensed by. From the opening cutscene alone, we were all surprised to see that this game immediately has a much better setup and presentation than the film. With a scene taking place in the Days of Future Past era of the character, the visceral gore and gritty tone of this scene sets the stage for a ride of hacking and slashing that will never get to see on the big screen. After Logan narrates the line that is different every time I hear it for some reason, I'm the best there is at what I do. At least the people still living after I'm done doing it say that. It cuts back to his days as a soldier for Weapon X, then cut to, uh, um, stabbing a guy so hard a crater forms. Uh, well, a more general synopsis is that this game has the plot of the film, with all of the scenes redone to be way more entertaining. Everything from the film still happens, sadly, but they did the best they could to turn it into a gore-filled rocket ride. My best example is the fight to escape the Weapon X facility. In the film, Wolverine fights a room full of people and then instantly gets outside to see the light of day. Well, how threatening is that? Which never happened in the books, but whatever. In the game, Wolverine is poisoned, loses his healing ability, is cured by some random doctor with a conscience, saves a little girl who can teleport, fights a bunch of prototype monster things, and escapes into the frozen Canadian wilderness through a massive floodgate. It takes events that happen over less than 30 seconds in the movie and makes it a grueling battle for supremacy against a wave of enemies that never seems to stop. It also serves as a way to put some thought back into the thoughtless story and fix the happy tone. You could argue it was just an excuse to have it be a video game where you kill tons of nameless dudes with your deaf Canuck knuckles, but I think these add-ons are what makes it a better experience than its counterpart. I really appreciate the hidden audio logs that provide some background on all the characters and events. That's not something they needed to put in a game like this. But it's nice that they did, and it makes the experience a little more full. The only major point of diversion from the film is when Wolverine just kind of forgets about the plot for a while and goes to raid a military base inside of a mesa that turns out to be a sentinel factory. And hey, look, it's Bolivar Trask! Boy, you want to talk about the X-Men story having continuity errors, look at the differences with Trask every time you see him. Angry looking black guy. Secretary Trask. Less angry looking black guy than, uh, uh, he must be doing something new with his hair. He looks good for his age. The game provides a valid reason for Bolivar Trask to dislike mutants and plant the seeds for days of future past. This game's story also proposes an origin for Nightcrawler by suggesting that teleporting Will I Am and Mystique are his parents. 
I know that the next movie to come out immediately shut down this idea and screwed up the continuity even further, but I like that they were being creative and trying to make something new with X-Men lore. Also, it's a godsend that Mystique is wearing clothes for once. That whole idea of her being naked and, um, smooth was only a thing for the movies. Ah, it's so stupid. Like, can't she just use her powers to make clothes? The improvements don't just stop at wardrobe fixes and added scenes, they also do a great job of recreating poorly done scenes. What was undoubtedly the film's silliest fight scene is made into an epic chase sequence that goes on to the point of being insane. Instead of fighting Gambit in an alley with goofy looking effects, he fights him through an entire hotel and casino, and on top of a collapsing construction site with police helicopters watching, and on top of a neon sign that's exploding. Jeez, Gambit, you think you overreacted a little? This was a minor misunderstanding that led to somewhere in the ballpark of a few billion dollars in property damage. People died, man! No wonder they recast you as Channing Tatum, dumbass. So let's get to the meat and adamantium bones of this game. Time to get to work. How is the gameplay? Well, Wolverine basically has over 500 methods of killing nameless army guys. You may think 400 methods was enough, but it wasn't, so here's a scene where he pushes a guy's head into some helicopter blades. You know, I distinctly remember always feeling bad for this pilot when killing him. He looks so afraid, and he gives you this head shake, like, Please don't kill me in a spectacularly gory fashion, Mr. Mutton Chops and Daddy Issues. I don't deserve this! I wonder if that pilot had a family that he was taking care of. Maybe as a kid, he always dreamed of flying helicopters, and, and Weapon X was the only place hiring at the moment. And his son, Little Averyation, needed food on the table. Maybe this guy's parents and family never find out what happens after the helicopter crashes. Maybe it's worse if they do. Jesus, Wolverine! Aren't you thinking about any of this stuff? Of course not, you're too busy trying to think up new ways to string someone's intestines across an entire forest in less than an hour. So this game sure gives Wolverine fans a massive dose of that cathartic violence they've been itching for. And Hugh Jackman lends his face and voice to it, giving a sense of authenticity. After I kill Victor, I'm coming for you. You wanted the animal, Colonel. Well, you got it. There are medium combos, strong combos, grab attacks, and a load of environmental hazards you can use to vary the fight. Throwing people into forklifts, explosive containers, cement mixers, and basically any tree branch that's pointy enough gives you a real sense of the savagery associated with the character. That's not to ignore the excessive finishing moves he can perform and the amount of limb removal that borders on being just flat out wacky. There's not a ton of grace or subtlety to this rampage quest. I think that's something they got especially right with this game. There's a certain charm to the dumb bluntness of Wolverine. Unlike a typical drooling monster like the Hulk, Logan is perfectly capable of fitting into society, talking through his issues, and using his brain to get past a rough situation. That doesn't mean he's going to do any of those things, but he's capable of it. The game makes reference to this in scenarios where you can't just cut your problem and it forces you to start thinking like a civilized human being again. What the hell? A puzzle where I have to use portals to get out of this science base hidden in a mesa? What is this? A, a game where that sort of thing would happen? I, I guess it is actually. References aren't jokes. Oh my god, there's so much everything happening right now! What do I even do? The game has a fairly simple upgrade system and a set of perks you can add to boost Wolverine's effectiveness. So if you want a certain type of build, you can go for it. I find myself gravitating towards boosting the healing abilities and making him take less damage. I also love the healing effect in this game. It's the first one I've ever seen to do anything like it. Wolverine can be blown to pieces and still keep brawling. There are points where he's so damaged from the waist up that you can't see a patch of skin anywhere. And he just keeps going. 
I remember they used a similar effect for the Deadpool game a couple of years later, and it still looks just as good. Sure, your health can run out because it's a video game and you have to be allowed to die, but it takes a lot for that to happen. Now, I know what you're thinking, but surprisingly, you don't often feel overpowered because they throw so many enemies at you to compensate for how unbelievably tough you are. So it balances out. The bosses range from fighting a rock monster or a wendigo monster most of the time, which can get really boring really quickly. But the fights against actual characters are much more interesting. The undisputed highlight of the game is the fight with the Sentinel. The only thing missing from this scene is the 90s X-Men theme song blasting at full volume. The spacing between the boss fights starts to get a little weird though. Right after the Sentinel fight is a fight with the Blob in a King Supers, and after that is a fight with Gambit. The boss fights make a great use of environments and all have something special about them, though they could have been put a little farther apart, so the player doesn't get all the goods in one place. Another feature I adore is the secret items. If you collect two of these hidden action figures, you unlock what we have all been craving since the year 2000. What would you prefer? Yellow spandex? Wear it! Just wear the damn suit! Why won't you do it? Look at what they have Chris Evans wearing! He's practically just an American flag and he looks badass! Just put on the damn costume in the last movie! We all want it! Can't believe they teased us so bad with that deleted scene and never committed to it bastards. Anyway, you select it in the bonus menu and then they drop you in this creepy looking arena and you're wondering what am I doing here? Is this going to be some kind of prison shower scene? When suddenly another Wolverine wearing the costume shows up and you have to fight him to the death to get his suit in the main game. There is a boss where Wolverine fights himself and you can do it again for all three costumes. Forget the wife beater and acid wash jeans. This is what a badass wears in the battle. Yeah! So, what are your thoughts on the new duds? This is some kind of damn superhero fashion show. Cause I got some orange and brown tights that put you to shame. How does Wolverine's hair grow back when he's been blown up? His healing factor works on his hair? How does it know when to stop growing? Uh, what if he wants to grow it out and cut it off again? Shouldn't he have, like, Rapunzel hair? Or if he gets blown up, shouldn't he be bald for a little while? Hey, maybe that guy with the red shirt and the swords knows the answer. Oh, wait. Oh. The one thing this game couldn't fix. Deadpool becoming a Mortal Kombat character. At least you get to beat the shit out of this abomination yourself while angrily quoting things about B. Arthur and Chimichangas. I can't believe something like this happened. Well, you used to be more chatty than this. I guess you're not the merc with the mouth anymore. It's such a blatant disrespect of a character in the name of keeping him from upstaging the other two guys. They took away his source of power. It's all wrong. It's like if Spider-Man was a tired old man and shot lasers out of his wrists instead of webs. Looking at it from the point of view of the developers, they had their hands tied and couldn't change something so drastically from the movie. So they just made it a fun boss fight for what it's worth. And at least we all know the Deadpool character would bounce back from it eventually in a solo thing that captures his essence well. Looking on the bright side, this game has a more interesting version of the movie's terrible plot 
gameplay that addresses all complaints about the watered-down portrayal of the character, and a performance by Hugh Jackman that we all wanted out of him but still haven't gotten. The only downsides to the game are that it gets a bit repetitive in the last few missions, and the enemy variation slows down dramatically by then. We get occasional flashbacks to his crazy antics in Africa that are so much less interesting than the stuff in the future. The difficulty curve gets a little wonky in the second to last level, and it starts to feel like a chore to get through it. But when you do, it's smooth sailing from there. My hope is that the Deadpool movie will do really well and let the studio know that R-rated superhero movies can turn a profit, making Fox consider a rated R finale for the legendary portrayal of the world's angriest Canadian. You sure as hell didn't work out like we planned. That doesn't mean giving up. This world may be broken. I've got just the things to fix it. For now, the game is a badass love letter to a classic comic character in an overall competent character action game. I think it's definitely worth a play if you happen to be a fan of the character, like this genre of game, or just wish X-Men Origins was better. I'm a Wolverine, and my hatred keeps me warm, a Wolverine. So you rush Until next time, warned. friends, always remember... Go fuck yourself. Oh, and also, wear the suit, you effeminate Australian!